So it's the 2nd of May 2022 as I record this video and IK Multimedia have a group buy for their Syntronic 2 software instrument. But what is Syntronic 2 I hear you say? I'm glad you asked. Syntronic 2 is marketed as a collection of classic synths and if you look at the screens that are displayed on the IK Multimedia website you might think that. But whereas synth recreations from manufacturers such as GeForce and Arturia rely on recreating the algorithms of the original synths giving you effectively the synth in virtual format which is also the approach that's been adopted by Roland with their cloud instruments and Korg with their legacy series it gives you the instrument but the instrument relies on the CPU of your own computer to do the, the heavy lifting to do the, the creation of the sounds on the fly Syntronic 2 is a subset of the sample tank player that IK Multimedia have had out for several years uh, they're now up to sample tank 4 and they've recently released Syntronic 2 Syntronic takes a different approach it is sample based um, that's not to say it's a bad thing it gives you access to the curated sounds of some very classic synths it's a question of whether or not that's what you want it has to be said that native instruments have gone down a similar line with their contact player and they have a number of retro synth recreations which are sample based in contact so I thought the first thing to do whilst we're actually on the website itself is to have a look at the group buy as it stands today because it is a moving target so here we go as we stand today with 18 days remaining to the 20th of May which is when the month is up you can now go in buy one Syntronic synth and you get 11 free and that will go up the more people buy into the group buy that's to say assuming it's not extended the group buy for the 25th anniversary was quite significantly extended to allow people to buy in whether they'll do that time will only tell no promises so what they're offering is all these synths you can download the sample sets to recreate the sounds the presets of these synths you have to buy one and then you get the rest free and you can keep adding more as the group buy progresses and more are added into the offer um, I'll put a link in the card um, to the video I did about the group buy um, because it's the same process for downloading and collecting your promotion items it isn't a question of when you buy you get that and that's it as more are added more downloads become available to you in the promotions section of your user area everything currently is 49 euros 99 but you can use jam points which IK Multimedia seems to give away with great glee and abandon um, and I used 15 jam points 30% is the maximum you can use in your jam points against any purchase so I bought the Syntronic GSV for 34.99 euros um, and once you've done that you can then download any of these synths now you do have to download the Syntronic player itself but Syntronic CS the custom shop version of Syntronic is free and that does come with some factory content so you don't even have to spend anything and you can get a little bit of all of these and there are some good ones now there are overlaps with things like the Arturia V collection we've got the Jupiter 8 the sounds of the Jupiter 8 the sounds of the Juno 60 the sounds of the ARP 2600 everybody in his maiden ant has a mini Moog um, there are some here that aren't in um, 
there's some different Moog synthesizers, the Moog Source, the Prodigy, the Micromoog and the Multimoog. But there are some that are in a lot of different uh, collections. The Pro-V, for example, the Sounds of the Prophet 5, um, that's uh, available in the V collection. We've got some Roland stuff here, the, the TB303, the, the infamous bass line. I used to have a TR606 Dramatics, never had a TB303. But as far as I'm aware, you can only get that through the Roland Cloud otherwise, but you do have access to the sounds here. And the Yamaha CS80 is the uh, is the other one that's in the Arturia collection, as well as some of the Oberheims. Now, they do have some of the Oberheims, they have the, the OBXA, but the OB1, so to speak, in the newer ones, um, you've got the Oscar, which is available from GeForce in a, an algorithm version. Um, but the OB1 here, I don't think is available anywhere. The KW8000, which is their version of the Korg DW8000, I don't know if that's available in Korg's Legacy series. But anyway, you have all of these. The question is, what do they sound like? Let's have a listen. So this is what Syntronic looks like when it loads. You have your models down the side, the different synths that they have. You have whether it's from the original Syntronic or Syntronic 2, which is important because some of the features of Syntronic 2 aren't available for the legacy presets from Syntronic 1. And you have your category. What particular, do you want guitar, organ, synth, lead, pad, and the timbre. You can filter by character of the sound. Um, and there's a lot of different characters and style as well whether you want digital, analog, acoustic, etc. And even what's suitable for the type of music you make. And again, there's a lot, and, and so on. So there's a lot of filters available to us. And then once you've made your choice, you get the instrument. Now, what we're going to go for here is the Moog. So, now, one of the things that I find really weird is if I use my mouse wheel to scroll, instead of the OB1 disappearing and the polymorph coming up to the top, it jumps down to the next set. Now, it's worth having a look here. At, if I click on that, you'll see I have a couple of presets. That's important because when you download the custom shop factory selection in your sounds, and we'll come back to that when I have a look at the product manager, you do get a few samples from a few presets set little bits of samples. It's very confusing um, for each one. But you don't get the full Monty until you download the actual individual file. So we're going to go for a pad and we're going to go for the Elismus pulse pad. There it is. It's now loaded up and it sounds like this. And I do apologize, I am not the world's best keyboard player, not by a long shot. So we've got a little bit of motion going in there. What you get is you get a generic edit page. And this allows you to set up a very complicated modulation matrix. Uh, your oscillators, and for each of these you have access to different sound sources from the sample set that comes with um, the, what you buy. Um, you also then have the filter, uh, your envelope controls and some LFO controls, as well as the usual pitch bend control, the mode, whether it's poly or mono or legato, glide, um, and also the volume and pan. So if you get rid of that, you then get the, the GUI. And for all of these, as I understand it, the GUI that you see here is fundamentally a front end to these here, except that with some of these, this gives you more control, more finesse. You can see what you're getting. Now, like Contact Player, this comes with its own built-in set of effects. However, unlike Contact or the Contact Player, you have access to the, the whole shebang. Um, you can load anything you want. Effectively, 
Syntronic, like Sample Tank, comes with Mixbox built in. So we have here a channel strip, an EQ, a compressor, and a plate. So let's have a look at what you actually could load into that empty. Different amp sounds. You've got American British Tube. Guess what these are? Jazz Amp 120. I wonder what that is. SVT Classic for your bass sounds. Distortion. Um, I wonder what Overscreen is. Um, some of these are quite interesting. Phonograph gives you like lo-fi sounds as if it's a, an old vinyl thing. Your range of compressors. Um, Black 76, White 2A, EQ. Um, so you've got an LA-2A, you've got a Black 76 like you've got there. Uh, you've also got um, a Pultec, effectively, mentioning no names. Different um, modulation effects, chorus, flanging, a nice selection of reverbs and delays, and then a filter for the more wanky sounds. So, so that's your effects section. And then we move on to the player section, where there is um, a built-in arpeggiator or a very simple sequencer um, with its own controls. You can set it to tempo sync to your DAW and the range over which it goes. All well and good. You know, you can sit and play. And it works. However, where I think Syntronic has a bit of an edge over some of the others is up here. Now you might think this is just for variations on the theme, but you would be wrong. So we go into there and what you can do is you can layer four sounds. So if I was to go here, here and load another sound in slot B, I would then be layering those sounds and I'm not confined to layering a sound from the same synth. So you could have Juno strings overlaid to that Moog pad, etc. The other thing you can do is if we just go to B and we go back and we, instead of a pad, we select a lead and we go for uncertainty of origin. We can now split our keyboard. So let's take this down and split it at the A. So if I now play down at the bottom of the keyboard, I still get my pulsing pad. But if I pay at the top of the keyboard, I get a nice lead sound. Now, it's worth just spending a moment to think about this lead sound because this is a monophonic sound. So if I play the G and then I play the octave above, it's playing that in preference to the G. So you might think that's high note priority. Those of us who are old enough to remember monophonic synths when monophonic was all you got will remember there was the debate about high note, low note priority. So is it high note priority? No, it's not. It's last note priority. Whichever note you play is the one that it will play to, and then it will default back to any held notes. So you get this. And then if we put in a little bit of uh, keyboard down the bottom, we get. And we put a little bit of uh, a pad sound at the base, we get this. Ignore the bum note there. Right, so what you also get is the ability on each of these to select which controllers it responds to. So for example, I can take the pitch wheel off this and then if I play and bend and just span the, uh, the notes,
you can see that the pitch of the pad isn't affected, but the pitch of the lead sound is. You also, because you have these different sounds, you have a different set of effects. Now this can get quite a burden on your um, computer quite quickly, because what we have here is we have channel strip, EQ, compressor and plate running, and at the same time we're running channel strip, EQ, etc. But now I've split those. You can also adjust the relative volume of them and the pan. And that. So there you go. I'm not quite sure what that one does actually. Um, that presumably mutes the sound. Yep. And that solos it, so I can play the down the bottom of the keyboard and nothing happens because I've soloed it. Take that off. And I've got my pad back. The other thing you can do is adjust the velocity. So you can layer your velocity. So if you want to play very quiet, you can just have your pad. And then once you start to play with a bit more vim, you get... And that's Syntronic 2 in a nutshell. That's what you would be getting if you joined the group by. So let's have a look at the product manager. So here we are in the product manager. I've installed Syntronic 2. It's the free download, the custom shop version. And I also downloaded the Syntronic 2 custom shop sounds. That was 3.1 gigabytes. These are the other ones that I have downloaded so far. And if I scroll down to the bottom, you will see that I have installed Syntronic Cinevee. Only I haven't. Like I said, when you install the Custom Shop 3.1 gigabyte download, it downloads a few of each of these. So although it's telling me it's installed, it's not. The clue that this is really a front end to sample tank comes when you look at your notifications and it says relaunch sample tank in order to load the installed library. This is after I installed one of the other um, Syntronic instruments. I'll just turn that off. The thing to bear in mind with these downloads is that you're going to download them into the product manager folder on your uh, computer and then they're going to be installed in the library destination. So as I put in my previous video, you need to be careful that you don't start suddenly filling up your root hard drive with all of these samples twice over. Um, I'll put a link again. Uh, it's worth having a watch of that before you start downloading this stuff. So as you can see, this is a 15 gigabyte download in six files, and it does take a while. So I shall simply, to get it to download into the library location on my library drive that I have already set in Syntronic, which I covered in the previous video, I'm simply going to click Reinstall Library. And at that, it will take a while. So I'll not keep you hanging about. Thank you very much for watching so far. If you found the video useful, please like and subscribe. Details below and you subscribe in the usual manner for YouTube. And it only leaves me to say, until next time, you take care of yourselves.